In this module, you will learn about the basic design and functions of the most important components of a hydraulic system. The term efficiency will also be discussed in this context. The following learning objectives are to be achieved with this learning module. You should be able to explain the basic functional groups of a hydraulic system and their functions. You should be able to explain the basic functionality of a hydraulic system. You should be able to name and identify the important components of each of these functional groups. You should be able to explain the basic functions of directional control valves, flow control valves, pressure relief valves, check valves, hydraulic pumps, and hydraulic cylinders. You should be able to explain the basic characteristics of open and closed hydraulic circuits. You should be able to explain why a hydraulic system cannot function without losses. You should be able to calculate and explain the significance of the efficiency of a hydraulic system. You will be provided in this module with multiple opportunities to check your own learning progress at regular intervals. Your performance in these tests is neither stored nor evaluated. You have the possibility either to repeat these intermediate tests or to skip them completely. In a hydraulic system, energy is converted. First, mechanical, electrical, or thermal energy is converted into hydraulic energy. The energy is then transported in this form, controlled and regulated as required, and finally converted into mechanical energy. The picture shows a tunnel boring machine. A hydraulic system provides the enormous amount of energy required by the drill bit. By illustrating the energy conversion process in a diagram, you can recognize the basic functional groups in a hydraulic system. On the input side, energy is provided by a motor, for example. This is generally an electric motor or internal combustion engine. However, a manual drive, that is, with a crank, is also possible. The input side is supplied with electrical or thermal energy and provides mechanical energy. The working element such as the enormous drill bit of the tunnel boring machine, is found on the output side. The working element requires mechanical energy. The hydraulic system lies between the input and output sides. Its task is to transport energy as needed from the input to the output side. A hydraulic pump converts energy from the input into hydraulic energy. The hydraulic pump is therefore an energy converter. The energy must then be regulated according to the requirements of the output side. The hydraulic system contains controls. Hydraulic control valves fulfill these roles. The correctly regulated energy is then converted into mechanical energy in yet another energy converter, which is then supplied to the working element. This task is carried out by the hydraulic cylinders or hydraulic motors. The basic functionality of a hydraulic system can be illustrated in this example using a simple jack. Force is exerted on the piston of a hand pump. This force, divided by the piston area, results in the attainable pressure. Pressure P equals force F1 divided by area A1. The harder the piston is pressed, that is, the greater the force exerted on the piston, the greater the pressure rises. The pressure applied to the piston surface in the lifting cylinder continues to increase until it is able to lift the load. Pressure multiplied by the piston surface area of the lifting cylinder equals the lifting power. Power F is equal to pressure P multiplied by area A2. If load remains constant, the pressure does not increase further. It is subsequently applied to the resistance working against the flow of the fluid. The load can be moved when the required pressure can be built up. How fast the load can be moved depends on the flow rate supplied to the lifting cylinder. In our example, this means the faster the hand pump piston is lowered, the more fluid per unit of time is applied to the lifting cylinder, and therefore, the faster the load is lifted. Our second example shows another simple hydraulic system, this time illustrated with graphical symbols. In contrast to our previous example, the hydraulic pump is now driven by a motor. When the motor is running, the hydraulic pump draws the hydraulic fluid from the tank. 
Without resistance, the fluid will simply continue to flow through the circuit. A hydraulic cylinder is loaded with force F. This constitutes a resistance to the fluid, which increases the pressure. The hydraulic pump continues to work until the resistance is overcome, that is, the piston in the hydraulic cylinder moves. However, when the motor is switched off, the force F may push the hydraulic cylinder back to its end position. The piston retracts. The fluid flows back into the tank and the system is drained. Further elements will be added to the hydraulic system step by step in order to prevent the system at standstill from being completely drained by the hydraulic pump, prevent the loaded cylinder from retracting when the hydraulic pump is at standstill, limit the load of the cylinder, control the direction of movement of the cylinder, and regulate the speed of the cylinder. By installing a suitable valve at the pressure output of the pump, we can prevent system drainage and the retraction of the hydraulic cylinder. The valve must block the flow rate in one direction and allow it to flow in the opposite direction. This type of valve is called a check valve or non-return valve. After this addition to our hydraulic system design, we can stop the hydraulic cylinder at any point by switching off the motor. However, if the piston were fully extended, that is, reach its end position, the pressure may increase to a point that results in the destruction of the hydraulic system. To protect the hydraulic system from excessive pressure and subsequent overload, the maximum allowable pressure must be limited by a pressure relief valve. In a pressure relief valve, a spring normally presses a poppet onto the seat of the valve. The pressure in the line acts on the surface of the seat. The poppet is lifted from its seat as soon as the force from the system pressure multiplied by seat area exceeds the spring force. The pressure relief valve then opens. According to valve design, the pressure does not increase further. The flow rate supplied by the hydraulic pump flows via pressure relief valve directly back to the tank. Now our setup is at the point where we can safely extend the hydraulic cylinder. The purpose of directional control valves is to ensure that the hydraulic cylinder can also be retracted. The term directional control valves comprise all valves that control the start, stop, and change the direction of flow rate in a hydraulic system. This example uses a directional control valve with three switching positions, A, 0, and B, and four connections. Observe how the system reacts to various switching positions. In order to change the speed of a hydraulic cylinder piston, the amount of flow rates applied must be controlled. In order to achieve this, a flow control valve must be installed. The cross-sectional area of a pipe may be changed using a flow control valve. By reducing the cross-sectional area, the flow of fluid accumulates before the flow control valve, which results in increased pressure in front of this valve. As soon as the pressure relief valve is activated, i.e. opened, part of the flow rate is diverted. Part of the flow rate supplied by the pump then flows through the pressure relief valve and the rest to the cylinder. The hydraulic cylinder, therefore, moves slower. The cylinder stops as soon as the flow control valve is completely closed and all of the flow rate supplied by the pump is diverted by the pressure relief valve. With such controls, one must remember that the force F as well as the viscosity of the pressure fluid, influence the speed of the piston. The following pressures occur with a flow control valve in a hydraulic system when extending the hydraulic cylinder, depending on the position of the flow control valve, that is, if the flow cross-sectional area is correspondingly large or small. Between the hydraulic pump and the flow control valve, we obtain approximately the pressure regulated by the pressure relief valve as soon as it is opened, and between the pressure relief valve and the hydraulic cylinder, 
we obtain an approximate pressure which corresponds to load, F. We now have a simple but functional hydraulic system. Please note that in the symbolic representation of hydraulic systems, the valves are always pictured in their initial position. Here we have a diagram of our simple hydraulic system with cross sections in place of the graphical symbols. Also shown is the symbolic representation for comparison. Do you recognize the individual components? Let's start at the bottom. The hydraulic pump draws the hydraulic fluid from the tank and supplies to the hydraulic system. The check valve prevents the fluid from draining into the hydraulic pump. The directional control valve controls the flow rate. The flow control valve, together with a pressure relief valve, influences the extension and retraction speed of the hydraulic cylinder. The hydraulic cylinder is our consumer. The pressure relief valve prevents excess pressure in the system and diverts excess flow rate into the tank. Recall the diagram Functional Groups of a Hydraulic System. The hydraulic pump is driven mechanically. It produces hydraulic energy by drawing fluid from the tank and generating a flow rate. It is an energy converter. The task of this functional group is therefore energy supply and processing. Valves control motion sequences, regulate fluid volume, and protect against excess system pressure. These components are responsible for controlling and regulating hydraulic energy. We therefore refer to this functional group as energy control. The hydraulic cylinder, as the consumer, finally converts hydraulic energy into mechanical energy and is therefore also an energy converter. Aside from the components in the functional groups energy supply and processing, energy control, and energy conversion, there are also components that do not fall under any particular functional group. We classify these components into a category called other accessories. Naturally, there are many more components in a hydraulic system than those we've discussed thus far. Here are a few of the most important components and their corresponding functional groups. For these components, we are showing you sample products from the Rex Roth catalog. Components from a functional group, energy supply, and processing. Please note that pressure relief valves that are used as safety valves are part of energy supply and processing. Functional Group Energy Control Components Functional Group Energy Conversion Components Components that are not classified under any of the other functional groups. We generally differentiate between two types of circuits, open hydraulic circuits and closed hydraulic circuits. In an open circuit, the hydraulic pumps draw fluid from the tank and feed it to the consumer via the control elements. In this example, the hydraulic motor is the consumer. The fluid then flows from the consumer back into the tank. We speak of a closed hydraulic circuit when the fluid flowing back from the consumer is fed directly back into the hydraulic pump. In this example, the consumer is also a hydraulic motor. The return line to the pump is secured by an additional pressure relief valve. The leakage, that is, the flow rate lost from the pump and motor, is fed into a fluid tank and must be fed back into the hydraulic circuit. This necessitates an additional but smaller hydraulic pump. Two check valves regulate the infeed of pressure fluid supplied by the auxiliary pump. An additional pressure valve secures the infeed circuit. Since leakage fluid cannot adequately cool off in a small tank before being fed back into the system, a cooler must be added in the return line. An open hydraulic circuit is standard in many applications, from stationary machine tools to winch and hoist transmissions. It is distinguished by its simple construction. The return flow of pressure fluid from the consumer into the tank is considered an advantage. The fluid can therefore cool off before being drawn back into the pump. 
Contaminants can also settle in the tank and are not reintroduced into the circuit. The small tank allows a compact construction for closed hydraulic circuits. The fixed pressure fluid also ensures a quiet operation. Other advantages of closed systems are good control properties and favorable volumetric efficiency. You will learn more about volumetric efficiency in the next chapter of this module. In engineering, there are no advantages without disadvantages. In an open hydraulic circuit, there is a large volume of fluid that must be circulated and handled, necessitating a larger tank along with sufficient installation space. The volumetric efficiency is also less than in closed systems. A closed circuit requires a more complex construction. For example, an additional feed pump is necessary. Since the pressure fluid is supplied directly from the consumer back to the pump, it has little opportunity to cool. This leads to strong operational demands on the pressure fluid. Furthermore, there is also the risk that contaminants taken up by the pressure fluid may enter the hydraulic pump. A characteristic variable for a hydraulic system is its efficiency. The efficiency is generally the ratio of output to input, that is, the ratio of output power to input power. The symbol for efficiency is the Greek letter eta. Efficiency eta equals output power divided by input power. Efficiency is also commonly expressed as a percentage. Efficiency is always less than one. This means that output power is less than input power. This is inevitably true because loss occurs in every technical system. In a hydraulic system, both mechanical and volumetric losses occur. Thus, there is a mechanical efficiency, eta mechanical, and a volumetric efficiency, eta volumetric. Mechanical efficiency is reduced by frictional losses. In principle, friction occurs everywhere where two moving bodies come into contact with each other. In a hydraulic system, there will be mechanical friction between individual parts of the components, that is, on bearings, at seals and components, and between pressure fluid and pipe surfaces and components. Volumetric efficiency is based on loss of usable pressure fluid. That means that part of the flow rate supplied by the hydraulic pump is lost. This happens everywhere where there are gaps between components through which the pressure fluid can escape, for example, between movable parts. The example shows a directional control valve. In the illustrated switching position, the pressure fluid flows through the valve from connection A below to connection B above. By doing so, it fills the entire space marked in red. Since the valve spool must be able to move within the valve housing, a certain amount of clearance is required. A small portion of the pressure fluid is pushed through this gap. Other flow rate losses occur at gaps that allow pressure fluid to flow through for lubrication or cooling purposes and are therefore necessary on a technical level. The leakage pressure fluid is often not really lost, but is fed back into the hydraulic circuit as leakage fluid through a separate leakage line. When designing a hydraulic system, the amount of input power necessary to provide enough output power is of course an important consideration. We are also interested in the total efficiency of the hydraulic system. Let's consider an electric motor as the drive unit. We can assume approximately 5% loss of electric power on the input side. The hydraulic pump uses between 5% and 25% of the power provided by the drive. Approximately 5% to 10% is lost when the pressure fluid flows through valves and pipes. Loss of power at the hydraulic cylinder equals approximately 4% to 7%. Hydraulic motors have a lower efficiency. They have a loss of between 5% and 25%. Added together, the loss within a hydraulic system amounts to between approximately 15% and 60%. That means that between 40% and 85% of the power supplied by the input in a hydraulic system is available to the output. We have not considered input loss since it is not part of the hydraulic system.